Hey everybody, here's Moritz, co-founder of Remnote. And today I wanted to give you a short update about the writing project or article I was writing about, now it's actually slightly rephrased, the past, present and future of tools for thought and cognitive augmentation software. And yeah, let's go to our small agenda here. Um, close this up and um, yeah, I wanted to like show you my new structure, um, also show you the actual new uh, article and then um, talk about future directions, maybe uh, show some tools and uh, that I used um, to help you with your projects. And yeah, let, let's get right into it. So uh, the new structure. So last time also somebody commented, like, why don't you use portals uh, for the articles? and that was definitely a great point. So now I uh, actually um, put everything in a portal. And if you don't know, there's this really nice shortcut, uh, which is actually command M or um, I think it's command M for every operating system. And then you can select the new parent and then you just click no parent and it will uh, be made into a, a portal. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's much more flexible because then, um, this document can be in many places and when you reference it, for example, in another article that you're writing with a portal, then um, you don't have to reference it as, uh, as a child of this article, but uh, it's sort of its, its, own, um, its own document. And this is just a quote, so let's uh, reverse it. Uh, but um, yeah, to show you basically a structure that it has sources, then um, this is what I actually read. So uh, about like 10 to 15 articles and then um, some more articles that I still wanted to integrate, but um, they are sort of on hold. So I still have questions about them. Maybe I will message the author. And um, then um, there's this article which I haven't really thought about integrating. And um, then there are still some articles that I wanted to read. I didn't, um, yeah, found those to be very valuable. So I just postponed them and uh, disregarded them. And then some other articles that I maybe will, will dive into at some point. And yeah, here is the, the structure of the essay. So uh, where I just wrote, um, or the article where I just wrote the article and then referenced um, the specific uh, useful content from from those articles and we, for example, when we look here, um, I, um, yeah, here you see, I referenced it and for example, in the article, um, and yeah, this is an interesting point where uh, it's at the very bottom of the article where I talk about um, the economic impact or future of, of technologies like this um, in, in, in under the topic trends. And here um, there are these three, and this is basically from this article to the, um, from this paper from, to my article, uh, you see the transition and um, where uh, reference basically this three impact um, technology standards uh, that will change maybe the future um, of this technology and to just um, tell you about it. So and those are superior censoring and capturing systems. So also live logging uh, devices, for example, when we, when we are wearing um, like future Apple glasses or eyeglasses, uh, whatever they are, will be called, then we are doing uh, live logging and capturing information that we can use in the future. Or um, when we have some device recording, for example, when I have something here recording, what I say the whole time, then I could use that in the future to um, for example, uh, ask myself a question or ask this AI a question, uh, what I said in that video. And um, this is actually a product, uh, which um, I also reference in the article. Um, so here, so if you're curious, jump into the article and learn about uh, this product, uh, product. And just to continue this, and then there are advances in audio and image processing. So, um, yeah, this is basically also um, part of this uh, product I mentioned where um, you could basically have this whole live logging and whole uh, recording of, 
of your personal life or some or some other data source and then analyze it for uh, for new information new insights and so on and this is becoming available through uh, new machine learning techniques and um, advances and then there's the pervasiveness uh, pervasiveness of this place um, for memory cues so for example when i'm wearing a, an ar glass or i have my like uh, screen setup here and um, I don't remember something or I need specific information to complete a task, we will always have uh, some type of screen or display device that will help us, that will be able to help us in, in the circumstance and um, yeah, for example, display memory cues. And then I also touch on the economics of, of tools like this um, and compare like open source, I, should, I think maybe that that's still missing uh, to um, to touch on like the open source business model, but yeah, to continue this agenda, um, yeah, as I said, um, I think the article is more or less done. Um, um, it's it's a, like a sixty minute read, and um, it was really interesting to dive into those uh, parts and read more about it and just um, follow my curiosity. And I think in the future, I will definitely dive more into some uh, parts, for example, which was really interesting is, um, sorry, when I'm just scrolling around here, uh, searching for this place. Um, ah, here, intelligent tutoring systems, where um, there's this field of um, study, which is called knowledge space theory, um, which is really interesting. Uh, so it was yeah, developed or researched by John claude uh, Falmang, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And um, yeah, that's basically uh, a technology also used in intelligent tutoring systems where there's this graph of possible knowledge states. So I, like as a startup founder, software engineer, have like a specific place in this knowledge uh, space. And from there on can basically proceed to the next steps and um, um, yeah, have sort of like a map of where I can go. And learn more stuff so it's not um, it, this doesn't exist for like my uh, profession but um, basically for the standard um, syllabi or curriculum which you have in high school or some main um, main um, study programs it cer certainly exists and is also applied um, by uh, Alske or Alisk um, yeah, and um, yeah, that was really interesting. And finally, let me show you for this whole process what, what tools I used and um, touch a bit on uh, what you could use in the future. For example, there are really interesting tools to help you um, read research papers and articles faster. Um, one is Solarcy um, or Scholarcy, and then there's also Genie.io, a more a newer service. Thing which is comparable um, so um, yeah they actually have like a small note-taking system also part of it and um, I think the summary is a bit um, yeah has, a, has also a nice overview and here I uh, just wanted to show you one example of of this article um, I looked at okay now, now it's gone uh, I hope there was nothing Hmm. It's rich. No input. Okay, give it another try. Ah, okay, we have to scroll down. So, um, this is an article about um, social computing unhinged. Uh, and social computing means basically this interplay of um, social science in a very computer science way and then also um, computer science infused with some social science uh, thinking and um, yeah the the networks of different computing uh, uh, entities so humans and machines uh, socializing or networking computing together and i think this is what this research field is about and um, we also see this when we um, 
yeah, look at the highlights. Um, yeah, it will intensify in the 21st century um, or um, if computation is machine cognition, social, uh, sociality and communication are human networking. So some very nice s small quotes that this um, tool found out and which helps me like get a quick grasp of, of this article. Uh, and finally, I wanted to show LitMaps, which is a very new tool. Um, and I can highly recommend it so far, um, at least what I've seen. And there you can basically import your Zotero library or a list of uh, articles you, you've uh, determined or found out, and then it shows you the graph of those articles. It's one function of it. And then you can, um, you can also, um, if I'm not wrong, um, then see which articles are kind of uh, missing in your network. So which are also highly cited of those notes or uh, um, papers, and then uh, find out like which article you're missing in, in your piece or which article you should read. And it has many other features like um, basically also biasing the search or adjusting the search for uh, avoiding like common areas. So very researched areas um, that are kind of um, crowded and moving you into um, those areas which are underdeveloped, under-researched and helps you uh, just create value in, in the sense. And yeah, I think that was it. Um, so I hope um, those small overview help you and um, some remote features I showed you. And yeah, finally, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. I'm not sure where this will go. I think I will just let the article now how it is and maybe write another one um, exploring a specific feature of one of those topics. And yeah, let me know um, if you have any feedback and hope to see you next time. Bye.